my name is Leonid Schifrin. I work uh, for Kernel Technology of Wolfram Research. I'm a consultant, and uh, today I'll be talking about R Link, uh, which is linking uh, R and Mathematica. Uh, the first thing we'll talk about is uh, the overview of the talk. So uh, um, I'll make an introduction, and then uh, uh, we'll discuss what the core R Link can do. Uh, and then we'll discuss a little bit uh, some applications of Arlink uh, to uh, something uh, frequently encountered in the workflow of uh, uh, those who work with R. Uh, so then uh, uh, there is an example that I hope I'll be have enough time to cover and there is some additional material. So if we have uh, enough time, we'll cover that as well. So. Uh, so this is the core Arlink that I'm going to talk about. So it's about installation, using your own R distribution, uh, then how you can send data to R, uh, what data types can be sent to R, uh, and uh, how to, can you execute R code and uh, all the other things which are necessary for a full workflow with R and Mathematica. So uh, let me start. Uh, so what is our link? Uh, well, first of all, what is R? And uh, R is a very uh, widely used by now uh, environment and language for statistical computing and graphics. It's open source and it's available on all major platforms and it became widely popular in the statistical community. Uh, so uh, R link is a mathematical application which allows the user to exchange data between Mathematica and R and execute R code from within Mathematica. Uh, so uh, the mm, components on which R link is built are several. So of course you will need uh, R runtime and distribution. Uh, some mm, version of R is coming bundled with R link. Uh, then uh, there is a mm, so-called GRI library. Uh, we're using Java to interface. R uh, with J-Link, and then uh, we built uh, R Link is built on top of J-Link. So this is sort of to say the technology stack, and of course it has also the Mathematica component. Um, so um, let me just briefly state what uh, our possible benefits of using R Link, if if it will show this. Yes. So uh, first of all. Uh, Mathematica users will be able to access pretty much the entire R functionality from within Mathematica in the way which is natural for a mathematical workflow. Uh, then there will be an easy way to make a transition for those who would uh, like to go to mo work more in Mathematica and less in R if they, if they, if they want it. Uh, but uh, for those who actually want to continue working with R, Mathematica can offer uh, a very uh, compelling uh, dynamic uh, development and testing environment. So that's another area where you can, where you can use Arling. Uh, okay, so uh, let me just show you uh, how it looks. So if you want to start working with Arling, first thing you do, you call needs Arling to load the package, uh, Arling uh, package, and then you have to call install R. So uh, once we've done that, uh, you can, well, this is just a sanity check. It returns, uh, so R evaluate I'll cover later, but that's uh, one of the main functions of R link, which allows you to execute arbitrary ma uh, R code uh, from within Mathematica. So uh, it just returns some uh, information about the R session. Uh, so uh, basically, that's, uh, uh, these two commands, needs R link and install R, is what you need to do at the start of your R link session. And uh, if you want to uh, mm, stop working with R link, you can call uninstall R, which I'll cover in a second. Uh, now, when you first w work with R link for the first time, uh, you might want also to call one of of the, these commands, R link resources install. Normally it will be called by install R by, by itself. So what, what does that do? Uh, R distribution does not come uh, uh, bundled uh, with R link uh, by itself. So R distribution is packaged as a packlet and it lives on a 
Boltram Packlet Server. So what this does, this uh, installs, downloads and installs this packlet, and it only does that once per your uh, work uh, on a given uh, machine or system. Then all subsequent times you won't have to do that. Uh, now, uh, you can uh, also use your own R installation. And, uh, here we'll show you. Uh, so if you press uninstall R, now I will use another R installation because so far I was just using the one which is a standard one which comes with Rlink. But if I call install R with a, um, oops, I think that uh, I, I should probably, I'm not sure if I called uninstall R first. I didn't. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, I think it's it's D. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a different it's a different drive. So uh, let me just. I hope this will be correct. But uh, uh, let me see if it will work this time. Yeah. So if I now evaluate our version, it shows that it actually is a different one. It's the one which is uh, uh, the new one, the, just the one which was produced in, uh, I think, uh, July. And the one which is bound with Arlink is the older one. So you can see that I'm now using an external distribution. But um, OK, so um, how do you send the data to R? Uh, there is this, uh, one of the main functions, rset, which allows you to send the data to R. It returns back the same expression, but now the variable myvar holds this uh, uh, value 10, or we can send a list if we want. So this is our set, and you use that to send any da data you want to send to R from those data types that are uh, possible to send to R. I'll cover which ones you can send to R. Now we can use R evaluate, and that returns back your results. And you can notice that 10 was put in the curly braces, and that's because R treats scalars as a one element vector. So that's, that's the reason for that. Um, so you can also uh, you can also make assignments this way because R evaluate can evaluate arbitrary string of R code and return you to you the results. So it can be also assignment or any other thing you would like to do. And you can also do part assignments. Here, for instance, I define a matrix in R from Mathematica, and then I uh, use R set to only change the first. Uh, row of that matrix, and you can see that it ha it was changed. So our set can be used with uh, any uh, left hand side, which is a so called L value, something which can be assigned a value in R, not necessarily just the name of the variable. Um, so what data can you send to R? Uh, you can send, uh, for instance, a list of integers, or that can be also real numbers or complex numbers. You can send a matrix. And you see that you use the uh, uh, familiar expressions. You don't think about how to specify a type, so it figures out the type for you. Uh, you can send uh, nested lists or rag lists. Uh, uh, you can send uh, something like, uh, you see here is a list of words, uh, so a list of strings. Uh, you can send logical lists or matrices. Um, you can also send null, and that's mapped to R null. Uh, and you can send uh, any combination of these types, uh, uh, because R supports lists, so it, it's mapped to R lists. So you can uh, send many different objects. Uh, you can also send objects with attributes. So with, in R, there are so-called attributes. So many R objects have attributes. These are kind of properties that the object carries with it. And then you use a slightly different syntax, you use this R object head and R attributes, where the attributes are indicated as a sequence of uh, rules uh, with a string name of the attribute and the value. And the value, again, can be any object that you can send to R. Uh, you can also have some user-defined data types. I won't have time to really cover that in depth, but here uh, the data frames are implemented in our link as a user-defined data type. And you can also send that and return it back. Um, so uh, you can, just to illustrate, uh, the core uh, object that really is there in place of that data frame is this uh, our object thing. Uh, so user-defined data types is a mechanism which allows the user to map 
some uh, Mathematica wrappers or objects that you want to create data types to some core representation used by Arling. Uh, and you'll get the same result this way. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the uh, R object model. So uh, what is supported? Uh, so um, this is a sort of a schematics of uh, what uh, core R uh, objects are supported by our link. And uh, I would say that pretty much most uh, important R uh, data types are supported by our link. So you can have the R object, which can be either uh, R core object plus attributes, or there are two special types of objects, code and environment. Those are, well, let's say they're special and normally you don't send these objects to R. You can get those back as a part of R expression, but uh, that's uh, something uh, more special. Uh, the core object can be either null, vector, list, or function. So functions are supported as a first class objects uh, in our link. And function can be either built in a closure, that's the, 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 that's the um, a classification taken directly from R because R functions can be built in or closure types. Uh, and vectors uh, can be, uh, well, these are basically R vectors and we support most types except so-called row types. So we support integer, double complex, logical, and characters. And lists are, can contain any R objects and R attributes themselves are implemented as R lists. Uh, so that's, that's the object model. Uh, it's simplified, so there are a number of types that are existing in R and are not supported by a link. But those are mostly types used either internally by R or used relatively rarely in uh, normal R workflows. So it's unlikely that you will, f you will run into these kind of limitations in your own work. So, uh, so how, how do we represent data and data types in uh, our link type system? So this is uh, a familiar way uh, that we represent data in Mathematica. But we have a special functions to our form and from our form which shows uh, which show uh, what is the internal R link representation of this. And sometimes uh, this internal representation might be useful if you want to know what, how R link interpreted your data. Uh, so, uh, for most cases, you probably won't need this internal representation, but it's good to understand uh, that internally what you enter is converted first into certain form similar in a way to full form in Mathematica, uh, although it's not exact uh, analogy. Uh, and I'm just showing how mm, various things that you enter translate into this internal form. And that internal form is sent to R or obtained from R. Although again, most of the time you won't probably uh, need to, to, to think about it. Okay, so uh, if you want to execute the uh, lines of R code, so here is a, we, we generate uh, an, a bunch of random numbers. So it's R evaluate and inside you can see a string of R code. We can also save that to some variable in R workspace and then we can call R evaluate to execute that. Uh, then uh, this is a little more complex example. You here, here you uh, we extract uh, uh, this uh, frequencies of various elements on that data as a data frame in R, and then we call table form on that. You can see the frequencies of that uh, data. Uh, you can suppress the output by uh, putting the semicolon at the end of your string of R code, and we can just check that we did some assignment and we squared the previous vector. You can also execute uh, multiple lines of code, but in that case, you'll have to put that into curly braces, uh, and then uh, you use R evaluate for that as well. And this you, ca you can also suppress output for these cases by putting the semicolon at the end. Um, so you can also define your own functions. And uh, here is a simple example. Uh, I'll define a function in R workspace uh, which uh, squares its argument and I can now call it uh, but uh, here I define it in our workspace and I call it also in R. Uh, there are other ways of doing it. I'll just cover that in a minute. Uh, from Mathematica, com totally from Mathematica. Uh, so here is a larger example. This is a function which implements a kind of a split 
analog of split in Mathematica. So it splits the list or vector according to some uh, criteria. And here is a bad way of doing this split. So we first define the vector, then we send it to R, and then we call R evaluate in R. That's not how we really want to do it. I, I just showing it so that you know that that's not how you should work with that. Instead, because this split was defined in Mathematica, you can directly call split on this runs, and moreover, you can send the criteria as a, another function uh, in R. So you can send R functions as arguments to other R functions. Uh, so here, you do it in a this is a proper way of doing that. So let me put it this way. Our functions are first class objects in our link, and they are supported including so-called higher order functions and closures. So you can return functions which are a result of how R evaluates things. If that is a function, it's returned to Mathematica. And you can pass those functions back to R. So it fully, it's fully supported. Um, you can also call functions uh, directly on uh, arguments like like I'm showing here. So you call our function and uh, so okay let me probably accelerate a little bit. Uh, so uh, anyways there are many ways to produce several ways to produce function references or functions in our link and in the documentation it's uh, extensively shown which ways are best. I'm just showing how you apply these functions. Um, well, uh, I don't really have much time to cover this R code cells. Let me put it this way. This is a very experimental functionality, which in principle would allow you to use a syntax highlighting uh, and use special cells, which would highlight your R code dynamically as you type. Now, there is a uh, example here. We split the text to words, so we define this uh, function here. and. Uh, then you can apply this function. So this makes for more natural workflow because you can uh, you, you can kind of interleave uh, mathematical cells and R cells, and that in many ways is better than just calling R evaluate. Uh, well, the data frames I'll just show very uh, cursory. Uh, you can work with data frames. Data frames is one of the core uh, data types of R, uh, very important in uh, tabular data analysis, and you can. Uh, uh, you can work with data frames in our link and uh, the, the the support is very basic but you can uh, but it's possible to extend it so um, uh, okay um, I probably won't have much time to show various details of how uh, you work with data frames in R but I'll hope I'll have one example uh, to show you uh, which illustrates that in a better uh, setting uh, so statistical modeling, uh, you can execute uh, certain commands such as, for instance, mean or uh, summary or pretty much any function you want in R and get uh, the result. Or you can do something more complex, like so here it's a linear model fit. And the result, I'll just show you the result. It's a pretty um, complicated object, R object, but you can completely import that as a mathematical expression and then you can work on that. Uh, so, for instance, you can you can pick up certain properties of that of that object. Um, okay, I'll let me maybe finish with uh, one example, which kind of illustrates the workflow, uh, which is combined the Mathematica R workflow. So, let's say we have some data which we obtain in Mathematica. In this case, this is a data related to a number of sites and a uh, rather well-known Stack Exchange network. And the numbers you can see here are the average number of questions per uh, day, uh, the percentage of answered questions, the number of AVID users, uh, the uh, ratio of number of answers and questions, so how many answers per question, and uh, the uh, number of daily visits uh, for all these sites. So we get this, this data, and for instance, we export that data into some file. Uh, now in R, we just set what the file was into our workspace. Now R knows where to look for it. And we evaluate, uh, the, we, we read that data into R. So we can see that now it's already read into R and uh, it's, it's in the form of a data frame. And that's uh, how the start of this looks like. Um, now uh, we can add some headers to that 
again, I execute mathematical command, but I'm actually adding headers to in the R workspace. And now you see that this table is with headers. Um, and here we can use some Mathematica uh, dynamic tools to visualize uh, this, uh, this tabular data. So here is the function in our workspace, which we're going to define, uh, which in a very compact way allows us to filter uh, various uh, columns or rows or various rows of that data, uh, depending on uh, some criteria. Let's say we want only uh, number of questions larger than certain uh, number or so on. And it, and it also allows you to order that, uh, that, that, that table according to a uh, certain uh, column. So that's uh, all code that is needed. It's very compact because R has a very, very uh, convenient uh, tabular data representation in a data frame. And now we'll supplement that by the uh, Mathematica code. Let me just try to execute that. Uh, it's just uh, basically the manipulate, which will embed that function into Mathematica uh, interface. So it's, it's, it's basically just uh, wrapping this into Mathematica manipulate. And now we'll, we'll run it. So what you can see here is that the data exists in R. But the way we analyze this data so we can change, for instance, the thresholds of how many, uh, what's the minimal answer ratio we, we, we allow, and what's the minimal number of questions per day we allow, and some other things like number of AVID users, and so on. And we can also sort this table according to various, uh, uh, to various column, uh, uh, columns. And you can see that uh, uh, basically, we work, uh, we use ma Mathematica Manipulate, but the data and all the actual work is done in R. So this is an example of how we can combine the workflow of Mathematica and R. And you can use R functionality but you can, uh, to, to actually do the work, but you can also use Mathematica functionality to visualize that. And that's just one of a huge other number of applications that R-Link may have, but hopefully it illustrates things. Uh, well, uh, you can also export that back uh, into some format and then import that into Mathematica into another format. So there are many ways you can interact. Uh, and that uh, is basically all I wanted to say in a limited time. So thank you very much and I'll be looking for questions.